So the next topic we're going to cover is something I didn't have until this semester because I wasn't as fluent on these topics until recently. We're going to talk about Java platform threads versus virtual threads. And again, this is really kind of a preview of coming attractions. You won't get a chance to use these APIs directly in, th in this class unless you have fun playing around with this stuff on your own. So we're going to talk about what is a platform thread and a virtual thread, and we're going to compare and contrast them. And if you want to get access to that stuff, you can get it through the Project Loom Early Access JDK, which I think is based on JDK 19, which has not been released into general use yet. So just a quick recap, a Java thread historically has been an, an object that contains various methods and fields that constitute its state. And we talked about this earlier. We talked about things like unique name, identifier, unique priority, unique runtime stack, unique thread local storage, unique instruction pointers, other registers, blah, blah, blah. And as I mentioned before, Project Loom refers to these types of Java threads as so-called platform threads because they have their own stack associated with them. Each Java platform thread is associated one-to-one -one with an operating system kernel thread. So for example, if you're running your Java execution environment on Android, it'll be using Android Linux kernel threads. If you're running it on Windows, it'll be using Windows kernel threads. If you're running it on Solaris, it'll be using Solaris kernel threads. Each Java thread will have its own OS kernel thread. And therefore, the platform threads contain essentially the same unique state as traditional Java thread objects do. And that's just supposed to show state. I'm not even really sure what that is. It looks like buttons. But it's just supposed to show like mechanisms. So that's what you would have in a traditional Java thread, platform thread. Platform threads are suitable for executing all kinds of tasks. Everything you can do with a traditional Java thread, you can also do with a platform thread. However, because they have their own stack and they use operating system resources, there's a limit on how many of these things they can have, uh, how, many, how many platform threads you can have, because each stack is typically, I think by default, one megabyte of virtual memory. So if you have you know, 50,000 threads, that's a lot of memory, right? <laughs> so therefore, there's another concept in Java called a virtual thread. And a virtual thread is essentially a lightweight concurrency object. So here's the platform thread. It's all beefed up, taking uh, performance enhancing drugs and stuff like that. But then the virtual threads are much lighter weight, slim down, you know, lean and mean kind of thing. So you can think of this as basically being a quote user thread, which runs in user space. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So you can have virtual threads that are so-called user threads. And rather than having the underlying operating system schedule it and the underlying operating system scheduler scheduling threads that are virtual threads, instead it uses something else. It's scheduled by the Java execution environment. Right now it uses something called the fork join pool. So as a consequence, you can allow a very, very, very large number of virtual threads can be created because they're not really taking up kernel resources. They're just objects that live in memory. And you could actually have, you know, literally um, hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions of these things. You could have millions of Java virtual threads. Virtual threads are multiplexed. All those gazillions of virtual threads are multiplexed across a pool of so-called platform threads. So that gives you a scalability Im improvement without changing the programming model per se. So let's talk about how you create platform threads versus Java threads. So there's a couple different ways to create a platform thread. One is just to do things you've always done using the old APIs in Java. You can extend thread. You can make a new thread. You can start the thread. So nothing has changed in that respect. That's kind of the legacy way to do things. Um, and you can do the same thing here. You can make runnables and pass them to threads. So that's, that's the traditional way of doing things. However, the problem is that these are relatively heavyweight. You can also create platform threads the Project Loom way if you want to. So you can either use the old school way or you can use the new way. You'll end up with basically the same thing. And so what you can do here is you can say, instead of what we did here where we just extended from thread and then made a new object and started it, here you can go ahead and create a new runnable and then you can say thread.ofplatform.start. So that'll make a new platform thread. You can start it. You can give it the runnable you want to run. And there's a bunch of other ways to start threads that I'm not going to talk about here in detail, but this is a very common way of doing things. 
You can also do it this way if you want. So this way will basically start things up with the runnable. You can also go ahead and create a thread that's unstarted. So you could say thread of platform .unstarted GCD runnable, get ourselves a thread, and then you can explicitly start it here. That's another way you can do things. Java platform threads are also relatively heavyweight though. So just because you have more APIs to call doesn't make them any less uh, onerous in terms of the resources that they use. So now let's take a look at how you would create a virtual thread. So it's actually very simple. It's kind of in concert. It's kind of mirrors or mimics what we have with, with uh, the platform threads. You just say thread of virtual dot start, giving it the runnable, and that'll start and execute the runnable thread. Or much like we looked at with platform threads, you can say thread of virtual unstarted GCD runnable, get a thread back, and then you can start that thread later. So it creates it unstarted, and then you can start it later to run it. These threads, the virtual threads, are relatively lightweight because they aren't taking up kernel-level resources for each thread. So they're leaner, they're meaner, you can have lots of them. That's the main advantage. So that's a quick overview of platform threads versus virtual threads. I hope we get to a point in the not-too-distant future where you can actually use these things in production code. You can play around with the early access stuff, but it's not very well integrated with IntelliJ. Yes, sir. So 